Good evening. Uh, my question is to Shabir. Shabir, in, the, in all of his presentation, makes it out to seem as if it's hearsay and gossip and stories that um, people had at the time, and it developed that Jesus actually died and was crucified, and he rose again from the dead. Um, but we have on the day of Pentecost, that was 10 days after uh, the ascension, uh, uh, um, Peter is preaching to a crowd that was there in Jerusalem. And he says in Acts chapter 2, verse 23, though, though he was delivered up according to God's determined plan and foreknowledge, you used lawless people to nail him to the cross and kill him. God raised him up, ending the pains of death, because it was possible for him, for, for it was not possible for him to be held by it. When, when Peter preached this message to the people in Jerusalem, 3,000 people that were there in the city believed and became Christians. Now, if this wasn't a fact that they could attest to, they wouldn't have converted. I was last night at the soccer match between Egypt and, and Italy. If you come 700 years later and say, you know, Italy won because they always win, it, does, it doesn't change the fact that we that were there know who won the match. So the, question, uh, the, 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 the issue is that your presentation or your conjecture that, that this is hearsay and gossip is refuted by the fact that people that lived at the time witnessed the fact that he was crucified and he was raised from the dead. And you can't get away from Thank that. You. Thank you for that. Thank you. Uh, you have described two situations. One, regarding the crucifixion and resurrection of Jesus and the events of Pentecost. And two, uh, your witness of a game last night, which you're reporting to us now in person. You can see the uh, two crucial differences here. First, uh, the, the event that you're narrating to us is not uh, an impossible sort of event in that given the natural course of things, even if uh, one team always wins, there is a good possibility that one day they might lose. Uh, so uh, we don't have any reason uh, prima facie for refusing what you're saying. Second, we have it from you, the person who witnessed it only last night, and we trust that your memory wouldn't fail you in just one day, and we trust that you're an honest individual. We have no reason to doubt you. Now, when you read about the event reported uh, of Peter on the day of Pentecost, you are reading it as though it was also written on the day of Pentecost. You have to realize that that was written many decades later. Now, according to a widely accepted datings, uh, the Gospel according to Mark was written around the year 70 AD, followed by Matthew and Luke around the year 85. Since the Acts of the Apostles is the, sec is the second volume of Luke's Gospel, it might have been written somewhere around the year 90 of the common era. And that means some 60 years after the event of the resurrection, also 60 years after the event of Pentecost that you're referring to. So bear in mind that the author of the Acts of the Apostles has received this story about what Peter said some 60 years ago. Most scholars think that the, uh, the author of Acts uh, of the Apostles did not have a direct record. Nobody taped the, the, the speech of Peter or recorded it in writing at the time. And there was no active method by which people memorized the actual words uh, and, and uh, records of the events as they uh, occurred. And then transmitted that by memory to the following generations. So Luke must have been writing the kind of thing that he thought was possible and likely for Peter to have said some 60 years earlier, given the fact of what Christians believe at the time when Luke is writing. So you see, there is a gap that has to uh, be uh, paid attention to, just like when you're getting onto the train, you have to mind the gap. <laughs> Well, Shabir is right. There is a gap. I don't think it's as big as he says, but um, even if it is, I, I, Luke and Acts, that's my, that's my specialisation. And if you, if you just want another scholar for your... <laughs> I think that Luke, Luke uh, that Acts was written in about 62 and a lot closer to the events. But whichever way we go, it was written uh, while there were still living people with memory of the original events and um, 
I don't think they could get away with wholesale fabrication. I, I don't want to dispute with David. I think uh, we are uh, proceeding in a cordial fashion and we will continue so to the end, God willing. Uh, as for the uh, dating of uh, Luke's writing, uh, the, the most commonly accepted dating is about uh, 90 CE. Um, but of course, one can have a different opinion about that. I, I trust that if you check uh, a wide variety of modern scholarly writings on Luke's uh, Gospel and the Acts of the Apostles, you will find that my dating is not uh, out, out of whack. Uh, the, the idea that Luke is writing at the time when there people were present who had witnessed the events it is also uh, quite questionable. It seems that uh, Luke is indeed writing, as he said in the beginning of his Gospel, he's writing based on the testimony not only of eyewitnesses is, but also of ministers of the word, which means people who are preaching. So we have a period of oral preaching. Luke hears this kind of oral preaching uh, by people who are not necessarily eyewitnesses, and he records this sort of preaching.